Hello, Jane. Hello, lovely, <laughs> lovely to have you here, Jane. Thanks for coming. So uh, you know that feeling in the run up to Christmas when you start to get that little stressed feeling starts to kick in a little bit. And, you know, it's supposed to be a really fabulous time. But it can the stress can start to creep in. Well, today we are going to inspire you to set some boundaries to protect your time and space and sanity, or rather with my, the help of my lovely guest, Jane. But first, if you don't know who I am, I'm Becky, the founder and creative director of the homeware brand Shea Becky. And I'm really excited to be interviewing Jane Pendry, whose mantra is resolve, heal, flourish, which I th think is lovely. Jane is an online, international, award-winning, clinical, solution-focused hypnotherapist, a rewind trauma therapist and coach, specialist in hemetophobia, with extensive experience in overwhelming anxiety, travel phobias, OCD, complex phobias, and trauma resulting from toxic relationships, workplace bullying, med medical procedures, or accidents. So Jane, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for having me. Please do tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yes, so as you say, I'm Jane Pendry, um, and I uh, I do have a home clinic, but mostly I work online with people across the world, and I tend to deal with those issues that are a little bit more embedded, a little bit more difficult to deal with, um, using a kind of range of uh, therapies, it's solution-focused hypnotherapy-based, but I also do um, some somatic healing type of approaches, breathing and so forth. And of course, the rewind trauma technique. So, um, uh, yeah, and I specialize in the metaphobia, which if anyone doesn't know, is the fear of vomiting. And that's a pretty terrible fear around Christmas, as you can imagine. So I'm very aware of people who are vulnerable in certain situations. You know, I help them create the boundaries and set the boundaries and give them some supportive techniques to help them get through challenging times and Christmas for some people can be challenging yeah absolutely and because it's also um well for me I always think of a food with Christmas they kind of go hand in hand don't they so they uh, and yeah so so tensions can mount around Christmas time um mm -hmm. especially with our relationships with other people family relationships um, what's your advice for, um, you know, trying to make that as calm as possible? Yeah. Well, I think the most important thing is always communication. People are not mind readers um, and everyone has slightly different expectations, don't they? So whoever's hosting Christmas is usually the person who's more of the matriarch, you know, who wants all the brood together Um is, is really hopeful for a lovely family environment um, but that's not what everybody wants so it's a little bit difficult so I think the key is to communicate well in advance don't wait till you're turned up on the doorstep find out uh, if you're the host you know just be clear about the plans with your family and ask them to do their bit you know what is it that they could do to contribute can they bring something with them Will they help clear up or whatever? Just agree and also ask and invite the conversation about how do you want Christmas to be? Um, so some people need a little bit of quiet time. They might have had a very stressful time at work or they're having some problems in their relationship or they have a complex phobia and they need, they can cope perhaps for a couple of hours, but then they need some quiet time. So that can all be negotiated. If you're the person who's not the host, then offer ask what can I do to help what would be most useful and you know that's the opportunity then you know having offered help having been sort of um, beneficent and, and, and cooperative to then say if there are things that you need because it's your holiday as well of course isn't it? it's your time for rest and recuperation so I think good timely communication is really the key to 
Yes, because I think it's so easy to assume, isn't it, that everybody knows kind of what you're thinking inside. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we judge sometimes by our own values. So, for example, you know, if we're a loving, giving person, that's how we show love. We we um, read other people's reticence or shyness as rejection. But it isn't usually the case. It's because everybody has different needs. So it's a, about respecting each other, uh, especially when you're dealing with adults, because children tend to go with the flow. But when you're dealing with adults, and adults are all coming together. They've all got different pressures, um, different expectations. So one of the things I think is really helpful is, uh, you know, I'm a solution-focused hypnotherapist. That means I'm future-focused, present and future-focused. We don't dig into the past too much. We know it's there. We know there's a history. But we're thinking about how we can make things better now. And so it's helpful. We, we use the term best hopes. You know, what are your best hopes for Christmas? And that language isn't loaded like objective. You know, that sounds like, oh, a business thing. And I have to, I have to, you know, do my 10 steps to reach my objectives. It's like, this is what I hope for. So if you say, well, I'm, I really hope to have a Christmas where everyone's at home and we just have a harmonious time and we enjoy the food, we watch the film together. What are your best hopes? And it's very non-toxic. You know, it means that people can talk about what they want rather than get into one of those difficult conversations about what they don't want, because it's always sounds of, can potentially sound a bit aggressive and then people get defensive. You know, I don't want this, I don't want that. So frame things in a positive way and you'll be amazed at the difference that makes to your communication. Yeah, so that's interesting, isn't it? So you can sit there and think about actually what you would like, because sometimes we don't do that, do we? We just do what we always do. Like this is, you know, um, so maybe having a ourselves having a bit of quiet time to think about actually what we would like, what our best hopes are, and then having that conversation beforehand with other the other people around us. Exactly. It's it's more likely to result in a harmonious, a harmonious conversation isn't yeah. it because you're all in fact in fact solution focused brief therapy which is my therapy is founded on was 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 rooted in family therapy and of course they discovered that if you put a lot of people in the room and say what's the problem <laughs> everybody starts talking about the problem someone else is going to get defensive so they switched it around and say how do you want this relationship to be how do you want the dynamic to be and you find that usually right underneath everybody's hopes are the same things to feel loved, to feel secure, to be respected, and all of these fundamental things. And it starts a much more positive conversation. And it can be an opportunity, Christmas, can't it, for fresh starts and for, you know, rekindling relationships, friendships. Um, so it's a good, good idea to go into it with that framework, I think, with that idea. Yeah, well, that's fabulous. I really, I really love that because it's, um, yeah, it's just having a fresh, look at look at it isn't it and and it feels like there's a different energy there already yeah. you know um yeah and um I like what you've uh, mentioned to me before about imagining the day going in the way that you want it to yes. al already so you know it's already going to be like this um yes so if it's already in your head like that, it's more likely to happen like that, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's the idea. But obviously, when you're dealing with uh, communicate when you're dealing with other people and they're all in the room together, if you're sitting and imagining that all on your own, you may come up with, you know, we don't want to be rigid about it. We don't want to find that, you know, I wanted to be like this. No, it's not like this. I mean, I, I once did some hypnotherapy with a lady who was, had a, a difficult anniversary to face and she was going to an aquarium um, on this difficult anniversary and she wanted the day to go well. So she we imagined it all. She reframed it, imagined it. And we put a cafe in there and she was going to sit in the cafe. She turned up at the aquarium and said, where's the cafe? And my family said, well, there isn't a cafe. <laughs> and she said, no, there's definitely a cafe. So, you know, we we, we always need to be a little flexible. Um, but I, but I think once you've had the negotiation, once you've had the conversations, and you find out what everybody wants, um, then is the time to to do 
do that exercise, which is more like an NLP goal setting exercise, where you imagine Christmas and you say, I am sitting at the Christmas table and uh, so-and-so is carving the turkey and everyone's laughing and we're popping the crackers and it feels, you know, feels very relaxed and happy and calm and like a, you know, like a really wonderful family moment. You're already living it, aren't you? And therefore, that is more likely to happen. And it could be in that vision you're saying, and, you know, Uncle Bob's gone off for a walk, which we knew he would do. You know, and in the past, we thought he was being difficult, but now we understand he needs some quiet time, you know, that kind of thing. And you're imagining it going, you know, swimmingly and being a nice, happy experience. So you don't, it also reduces the strength, the strength and the tension on the way up to Christmas because in your head, your primitive mind doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. In your head, oh, it's already gone really well. So uh, it takes yeah. a lot of pressure off. Oh, really? Yeah. And and um, how do you make special for you in your family, in your house? Well, I have to say I'm the maiden aunt, bless me, for my sins. So I've always had my Christmases with my sister and her family, her, her children who are now grown up, actually. Um, but we built up some Christmas traditions over the years. Um, in, we mostly have it in, she's got a lovely country house in, in Wiltshire, um, and it lends itself to sort of Dickensian feel Christmas, you know, it's a beautiful house. And Savanac Forest is nearby, and my job was always to go out and gather all the greenery and make real decorations, which is lovely, you know, over the mantelpiece. It takes time, but it's a really relaxing thing to do. Um, winding down the staircase oh. on the table, you know, to go with the huge Christmas tree. Um, and they always have this, you know, Christmas tree that reaches the sort of eight foot ceiling. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, because they're all growing up, they're all grow, grown up, they're adults now, but um, one of one of my nephews, when he was about 16, he's standing by the Christmas tree, you know, like when they're getting a little bit stroppy, and he says, he says, um, this Christmas tree is it's too small, so, but it reaches the ceiling like it always has. It's you, you've grown a foot. <laughs> so, they're all, and you know, that's all, you always have your little family jokes and things. So, so we centre it around the, 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 the food, and the TV and and uh, and walks in the country and all those sort of traditional things is yeah. very nice. When they were little, I used to write plays, and I hope one day I'll be able to do that for the great nieces and nephews. That would be good. Fabulous. And do you do any of the cooking? Or do you have a favourite Christmas recipe? Well, I'm the sous chef as a as a rule. Um, but cranberry sauce is something that I like to make because it's super simple. And it looks impressive. So Mary Berry's recipe, muscovado, sugar, cranberries, um, orange juice. You can look it up online. It's super, super simple. It's one of those ones you can delegate to a family member, you know, and um, they can bring it with them. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's very easy to do. And it's it's real cranberry sauce is really delicious. So I really like to do that. Brilliant. Yeah, that is a really, really lovely Christmassy thing to do, isn't it? Now, Jane, you've very kindly offered um, to give everybody a an initial exploratory co consultation um, worth £30 and £10 off a session up until the 31st of January 2024. Yeah. Um, how is the best way for people to contact you? Um, in the information below this video, I will put your website details and any details that you need me to Yes. Well, yes, so my website is www.sense-ability.co.uk. Sense as in sensible, S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, ability as in ability. Um, and, uh, or they can email me at jane at sense-ability co.uk or text me on 07843-813-83. The easiest thing is to find the website um, and the booking page. And actually, my uh, you can just book the free consultation and the code for booking sessions for um, money off. So my next session is an assessment, which I don't discount, but then the therapeutic sessions, um, the word is friends is the code. And that's for £10 off. And that's actually for your clients and your viewers. That's for the session up until the end of January. 
Well, thank you so much. That's very kind of you, Jane. I'll put all of that information so everyone can read it and come and find you if they need some extra help. And um, I have worked with Jane, so I can recommend her. Um, and really enjoyed working with you. Helped me a lot with, um, yeah, in the past. So thank you very much. It's lovely to work with you as well. Yeah, and you can see how you are thriving now. Yeah, <laughs> and perhaps one of everybody's best hopes could be that you're wearing your Che Becky Christmas apron while you're <laughs> cooking the turkey. <laughs> Absolutely, I certainly shall be. I shall be sous chef this year too, though. So uh, my sister also will be the chef. So um, yeah, yeah, that takes the pressure off, doesn't it? <laughs> really, nice. but it's nice to be able to all chip in. And it's a, it's exactly, nice we'll all bring something. I don't know what my contribution is yet, but yeah, all the family bring a different thing. My mum brings yeah. Christmas pudding. Somebody brings, you know, the cake. Somebody else does something. Yeah. So to Makes share it so much easier. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Share the load. So well have a lovely Christmas, Jane. Um, you too. And take care. And thank you so I much. I look forward to seeing all of your interviews over the 12 days. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Have a lovely time. Thank you. Bye.